The year 2023 has seen a lot of great VR releases. To celebrate a really good year of VR gaming, I have officially made a list of my personal favorite VR games from this year. This list was very hard to make because I mean, there was a lot of releases. I mean, from month to month, just a lot of VR games. This list is not in any particular order. The only placement that really matters is the number one spot, which is my VR game of the year. Just to remind this list is my opinion. So if you don't like my list, go make your own list and make your own video. How about that? <laughs> With all that being said, from PSVR to PC VR to Quest, my name is Mardu VR, and this is my top 10 best VR games of 2023. The first game on our list is Pixel Rip 1995. This is the second game in a trilogy of the Pixel Rip series. If you're a person who loves nostalgic games, retro fighters and stuff like that, this is definitely one of those games for you. This game brings retro to real life. This is probably one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in a VR game. And it never feels so amazing with every new entry in the series. I think the best way to describe the feeling of playing this game is like you're a little kid, you know, it's Saturday and you're sitting down with just like a bowl of cereal or something in front of like your old PlayStation or Nintendo 64 or any like GameCube or any other other retro console that you might have played back in the day. The way that this game brings the actual retro art style to a 3D environment is honestly amazing. This is one of those games where if I have a bad day, I just go play some Pixel Rip. In this game, you play as a hero Dot, who had to save the world from the Cybling Goblin. Usually in these games, Dot will assist the help of a human in real life to help defeat the Cybling Lord and save the land. Like I said, if you're a person who loves retro games, please check this out. This is I highly recommend. This is available on PSVR, PC VR, and Quest, but this year I played it on the PSVR 2. Our next game is one that came out very recently, but has definitely made the list. It is the RE4 Remake VR mode for the PSVR 2. This is my first experience with RE4 because I never actually played the game. And oh my God, this game is fun. This is one of the best PSVR 2 experiences out on the market right now. I highly recommend this for anybody who likes Resident Evil or any type of mutant infected type zombie game. This is one you do not want to miss. There's only been a few times I felt actual fear playing a VR game and RE4 definitely does it, man. It's terrifying in certain parts. From the wide range of weapons to just how good Capcom makes their VR modes in their games, the visual fidelity of the PSVR 2 also makes this a really cinematic and immersive experience. It's amazing how Capcom games like Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 8 really translate well to VR, man. It's honestly like an amazing experience. They're one of the few AAA developers who actually make good ports for the VR games. So I'm always happy to support them. If you have a PSVR 2, please go grab this game or you're crazy. Our eighth game is one of the most impressive games to come out this year for the PSVR 2. This is Synapse. This is one of the few games I've seen actually use eye tracking as one of the main mechanics of the game. Using your eyes to lock onto an enemy to using your hands to physically throw them using telekinetics is crazy. Like this is one of those games where it's like you can release so much steam <laughs> just playing this one. This is a roguelike shooter. So you obviously go through levels with varying enemies and difficulties and stuff like that. And you also upgrade as you go. So, so you progress through levels to get to the final boss level. It's a pretty simple gameplay loop, but one of the main things I love about this game is the cover mechanic. You can actually grab a wall or anything like that and physically move yourself down. So if you have like, you know, like bad knees or you just don't feel like, you know, crouching, the game lets you do it while standing up. It's really smart. It's just a lot of great game design here. And I highly recommend it for anybody who is maybe new to VR shooters or even just wants a really good challenge. This game also has one of the most unique art styles that I've seen in the VR game ever, really. This black and white kind of grayed out art style fits really good with those random pops of colors from like guns, enemies, and telekinetics. If you have PSVR 2 and you don't own this game, I have to psychologically evaluate you, not gonna lie. Our seventh game on our list is Battle Talent. It is a physics-based fighting simulator. 
The closest game I can compare this game to is Blade and Sorcery. Like this is personally my fighter of the year for VR. This game is so good. It literally took up my stream for like a month. Like I really was trying to get through the game because it actually takes a good bit of skill from using spells to arrows to swords, maces, hammers, axes. It's just a lot of stuff you can do and a lot of ways you can go through the dungeons in this game. I even joined a discord to ask for help about <laughs> beating the, the big goblin boss that swings the hammer. He's very hard to beat. I really didn't like that boss fight, but it was definitely a challenge challenge I needed. Every time I played this joint, I got really sweaty, man. It's a really sweaty game. Like, I'm talking about like Drench. I got like TikToks on it, so check out my TikTok if you're bored. But it is a goodie. The level of movement and just pure combat and aggressiveness you get to in this game when fighting just regular enemies or bosses, it's pretty insane. It's like playing in an anime like sometimes because the fights get so intense, you're just swinging. It feels like you're actually like in Sword Art Online or any other like fast paced fighting anime. There's also a really cool mod scene that adds stuff like Thor's hammer, Wolverine claws, Captain America shield. It's a bunch of cool stuff. Is this game better than Blade and Sorcery? Well, I can't really answer that because honestly, both of those games have different places in my heart. Like I love Blade and Sorcery and I also love this game. They really play like two separate games. So if you're a person who loves Blade and Sorcery, I think you will really like this one. I feel like it's very underrated and I feel like it did not get the coverage it really deserved this year from the VR community. With that being said, if you're a person who has a PC or a Quest headset, it is available to you and I highly recommend you go play it. And you can also mod the game on the Quest, by the way. The next game on our list is Red Matter 2. This is one of the most graphically impressive VR games I've seen outside of a Half-Life Alyx. And it is a must try if you have a PSVR 2 headset. In this puzzle adventure game, you play an agent named Sasha and you must discover the secrets of the mysterious red matter. So this is a really cool game and they give you a lot of useful tools to use to figure out some of these admittedly difficult puzzles. The atmosphere that this game provides is almost second to none and is a definite must buy for the PSVR 2. I would highly recommend people who like puzzle games and highly recommend people who like good graphics and space. Our fifth game is Assassin's Creed Nexus. So this came out a little bit over a month ago and it has quickly become one of my favorite games of this year. This game has it all, parkour, combat, stealth, everything that makes an Assassin's Creed game an Assassin's Creed game. In this game, you play as three of the main series characters. You play as Ezio Auditore, Cassandra, and Connor as you work to stop Abstergo, you know, you gotta stop the Templars. This game is honestly amazing because it really pushes the quest unlike any other game I've seen other than like, you know, Asgard's Wrath or any of the uh, actual Quest 3 games. The amount of NPCs on the screen and just the interactivity with the world is really good. This game really impressed me just by how much you can do. Like the stealth is actually competent, the parkour is really fun, and there's different levels of accessibility for the game also. If you're a person who's newer to VR, they make it way easier for you to actually, you know, play the game without getting sick. And if you're more of a veteran player, you can actually turn the difficulty to the next level. Also, I gotta mention, the game is actually beautiful. Being in Greece is definitely my favorite part out of the three main characters because just seeing Greece and the lighting and the water, and the fact you can swim in this game, and it's just a lot going on to make this like one of the best Assassin's Creed games that I've seen go to VR. After seeing how good this game is, Ubisoft like has to come back outside and give us more Assassin's Creed in VR. The series just fits VR so well. Like it is so satisfying throwing knives and enemies or jumping off buildings and assassinating people. It's just a lot going on. I really feel like Ubisoft could really bring their other titles to VR. Imagine a Far Cry VR game. It will work perfectly in VR. So hopefully after the success of Assassin's Creed Nexus, I hope and pray that we get some more stuff for VR from Ubisoft. The fourth game on our list is Propagation Paradise Hotel. This is personally my VR horror game of the year. In this game you play as Emily Diaz. You're trapped in a hotel during a zombie apocalypse and you have to find your twin sister. What makes Propagation Paradise Hotel terrifying is the atmosphere, man. This game, the atmosphere is almost suffocating. This is probably one of the most horrifying experiences I've had in the VR headset. Going around the hotel and it's quiet 
is like the worst thing ever. And the zombies, man. The zombies are actually terrifying in this game. They're actually scary. There's not many zombie games where I'm like, okay, these zombies are actually intimidating. The zombies in this game are tall, buff, and very scary in the dark. <laughs> Incredible lighting and just great level design makes this almost a Resident Evil-like experience. Incredible lighting and level design and puzzles make this game almost a Resident Evil-like experience in VR. Now, this is a shorter game, but honestly, I don't hold it against it because to be honest with you, I didn't even finish the game. Only because I was too scared to finish the game. So, But I played through a good chunk of the game and it's great, man. It's, it's just one of those experiences that if you're a true horror lover, you got to play this one. It's available on Steam, Quest, and PSVR. You should also check out the first game, Propagation VR, if you like wave zombie shooters. It's really good. Our third game is Gran Turismo 7. So this is one of my favorite racing games. And it's ironic because I didn't even like the flat version of Gran Turismo 7. I thought it was kind of boring, but in VR, man, it's different. The developers really made a nice and immersive VR experience that I've always wanted for a racing game. It's not much setup. You just put the headset on and you start the race. Now, other games, I have to go through modding and all this other crazy stuff. But in Gran Turismo 7, you really just put the headset on and just hop into the game. It's really simple. The detail of the interiors of the cars is really nice. Like, it's actually very impressive in the PSVR 2 to look around the car. I wasn't expecting that much detail in the actual, you know, interiors, but they really nailed it, man. I can't even lie. Even as a person who does not do racing games, like I said, this has become one of my favorite and top PSVR 2 games. And honestly, I would debate that it probably carried the PSVR 2 for a lot of people this whole year. So if you ever get a PSVR 2, you have to check out Gran Turismo 7. This game actually made me bust out my Thrustmaster uh, T300 racing wheel and actually do some races. I've never used the thing, it collects dust most of the time. So this game holds a really special place in my heart. And if you're on PC or anything else like that, try to set a course. Our second game is one that holds a really big spot in my heart. And it is No Man's Sky for the PSVR 2. This game has come a long way since its initial release in February. Around July, it got a really big update that made it the best version of VR for No Man's Sky. Guys, I spent so many hours just flying around this game, just hanging out, not even doing anything, just in space, chilling playing music. This is honestly the best way to play No Man's Sky. Now, a lot of my PC VR guys know that the PC VR version of No Man's Sky is really hard to run. So the fact that the PS5 has Soviet render makes it a lot easier to run on the PS5. This is one of those experiences that makes people fall in love with the VR. It might honestly be my favorite space VR game, to be honest with you. Elite Dangerous is coming really close. But it's just something about No Man's Sky, seeing the different worlds in VR, exploring, doing cave diving and stuff like that in a VR headset. It's just different. Also, being able to play with my flat gaming friends is also really nice. I don't think a lot of people realize how fun that is to be able to play VR games with regular PC gamers or you know PS5 gamers and just have fun. Man. It's, it's really nice and I appreciate the team behind No Man's Sky for actually putting in the work to make a good VR mode after all this time. And this is also probably one of my most improved games of 2023. Okay guys, now that we got most of the list out the way, I do have some honorable mentions that just didn't quite make the cut but are still great vr games our first honorable mention is genotype this is developed by bulver games and is honestly one of the coolest surprises i got when i first got my quest 3. this game is beautiful it takes place in the north pole this game is beautiful it takes place in antarctica and it is really cool as a setting it also has one of the most unique weapon change mechanics i've seen in the vr game apparently this is kind of reminiscent of bone lab but i honestly never played bone labs because it makes me sick so but this game just has a lot of style a really good story and just a lot going for it the weapons are fun to use the enemies are unique and really cool looking. And the characters are actually well voiced acted too. That's very rare in VR games, as you guys know. So I highly recommend you try Genotype. If you're looking for more of like a Metroid, kind of Half-Life feel for a game, Genotype is a game for you. All right guys, our second 
honorable mention is out of hand this is a very sleeper vr game man this game has the most unique movement mechanic i've ever seen in a vr game so the way that you move is you move by your hands it's kind of like gorilla tag but a lot less little kids way more fun this is a pure platformer when you play this you will sweat man i was sweating so bad playing this on stream and i had a lot of fun it's one of those games that has a really cute art style with a subtly dark story going on in the background and the collision of those two things makes for a really good experience on the quest i personally wish this vr game got more coverage because it's really great honestly i'm surprised a lot of people missed it if you're looking for a solid platform and experience on the quest, do not look further than out of hand. Our third honorable mention is Resident Evil 8 VR. Personally, it didn't make the list because honestly, I like RE4 VR more than RE8. It just, RE4 feels a lot more fun to me and a lot more new because it is my first time playing the game. RE8 is a great VR port and it's honestly crazy that Capcom got two AAA quality VR ports out within the same year. That is very commendable and shout out Capcom for always is giving us quality vr ports <laughs> unlike bethesda <laughs> obviously you know the story of re8 takes place in the village and you play as ethan so it, it, you really get the experience a lot of the cutscenes, a lot of the characters really close so but personally the first person cutscenes really make the game and make you feel really immersed into the actual story and it's really good for vr players if you have the cash i would say get both re4 and re8 just for the vr modes our last honorable mention is Gasler. This is one of the first Quest 3 games I played and it left a really striking impression on me because it is a roguelike. So it's a roguelike where you ride a train and you have to defend yourself against these red enemies called the Gaslers. So they kind of reminiscent of rabbits. If you ever played Mario Rabbits or anything like that, and honestly, they are very unique and the game is actually really difficult. So as you progress through each level on the train, you actually get upgrades to your guns and you have to physically move out of the way of the bullets being shot at you. This game gets really intense really fast and is a must play challenge if you like roguelike shooters in VR. Personally, I wish this game also got more coverage because it's really a solid game. Like many of the games I mentioned today in this video, this game is available on multiple platforms. Before we get into our number one spot, which is my VR game of the year, I just wanna say a quick thank you to you guys because we started at 500 subs this year and now we're almost at 2,500. So I really appreciate you guys who tune into the channel. I appreciate the support. Shout out to the PSVR gang, the PC VR gang, and the new people coming over from the quest. Interacting with you guys and building this channel has really changed my life this year. And I'm just appreciate you guys for staying with me through the journey. With that being said, let's go to our number one slot, my personal VR game of the year. My VR game of the year is Vertigo 2. This is honestly one of the most impressive and just beautiful and just full of life VR games I've ever played. To me, this is on the same level as a Half-Life Alex, as a Bone Labs, Bone Works, or any S tier VR game. I love this game, man. It's just full of so much personality. From an actually interesting story that has really cool implications, beautiful environments, creative character designs, and honestly, some of the most unique weapons I've ever used in a VR game, like ever. Vertigo 2 is just a single player adventure built up from the ground for VR, has really interesting Easter eggs, really cool enemy types, and it is, and also provides a great challenge for anybody looking to get into a kind of difficult single player VR game. It also has some of the most intense VR boss fights I've ever played like in my life. I also have to give credit to the studio because this is made by one guy. This is a one man team, which is crazy to think about. There have even been updates added to add a sandbox mode, custom levels, and this will bring a bunch of more life to the game. This game is coming to PSVR soon, maybe Quest one day, but definitely PSVR within this month or January. If you have the chance to get Vertigo 2, I highly recommend you pick it up as soon as possible. If you're a sci-fi nerd like me, this is a playground for creativity and it's an amazing experience. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a really good year just playing a bunch of different VR games, no matter the 
system, no matter who made the piece of plastic, it was just a great year for VR. I think we all agree this was this was the year for VR. This is the most I've ever played VR within one year, and I highly recommend you guys try out the games on my list. I would love to see your list in the comments below. What's your VR game of the year? What's your top ten or even top five VR games you you've played this year? With that being said, make sure you check out the description for discounts on VR accessories. Make sure you like and subscribe. But it's been your boy Mario Do VR, and remember, I'm just a dude with a VR headset. Peace.